What's up, weeps and gamers? My name is System. This video is about a new game titled Necromancer's Revenge. And it's not just about the game, but it's also about the genre. Wow. I thought that the Necromancer's Revenge uh, game genre was new to me, but after huh? I did some research, I found out that this is an old genre that popped out back in the 90s. Necromancer's Revenge, it's a game that is being developed, but players can access a playable demo on Steam. So, since I am currently creating videos related to new games, wow. I checked out this game to see if it was worth it. And it was. It is good, but the better description of the game will be that is an addictive game. In the process of gathering information for the video, I found out that the genre of this game is called Bullet Hell. And I was browsing similar games in this genre and realized that I have played this kind of game before. And I remember that I was 12 years old when I played a Nintendo Entertainment System game called Smash TV which was very addicting. I remember I could not stop playing the game until I finished it. Smash TV first came out as an arcade game. And according to gamers, this arcade game was a coin eater, meaning that players were spending a lot of money to keep playing the game to see if they could finish it. The graphics were awesome. And the story was that in 1999, a TV show called Smash TV had contestants, white machines, and other attackers inside a closed room. And once the room was cleared, the contestant will win prizes, keys for special rooms, and continue to more difficult challenges, including a final boss. Well, at the time, the game was like a one-hit wonder. And for some reason, this type of genre died out, but is being resurrected. We can see this in Necromancer's Revenge and in many other bullet hell games that have come out. For example, there are Vampire Survivors, Nova Drift, Raven's Watch, and many others. Gamers have concluded that this type of game triggers a part of our brains to provide a rush of dopamine and that is why they are so addicting. Well, enough dwelling into the bullet hell genre and let's dive right into the Necromancer's Revenge game. If you have played a similar game, you will quickly adapt to this game. You start as a necromancer that wishes to summon a demon. However, to do this, you will need to gather resources and become powerful to defeat the demon and take its power. I played for about two and a half hours and was able to kill the demon, but let me tell you, it was not easy. It was all in the balance of obtaining the right spells, upgrades, and most importantly, how you manage time. So, there is a timer on top of the screen, and if the timer reaches zero and your necromancer has not summoned the demon, it will be game over. GG's. So, you must balance all of those aspects of the game to win. Summoning the demon is only the beginning. After the demon is summoned, you must fight it. It will require a few more upgrades to defeat the demon, and you will require special abilities to defeat it. So be wise and choose well, my friend. Part of the balance in the game is to know where to obtain your upgrades, spells, and potions. I say this because you will have access to two shops in the game. One is a tomb and the other one is a crypt. The tomb requires fewer blood diamonds to unlock a random item. However, the crypt takes more blood diamonds in order to unlock it, but it allows you to choose the spell or potion of your choice. You can either buy a new spell or a healing potion or a mana potion. You can also buy spell upgrades and you have six slots where you store the spells to have them ready to use. There are three kinds of different diamonds to collect each time you kill a monster. 
They are the green diamonds that fill your experience bar and each time it is filled, you level up. You can upgrade a random perk when you level up. Perks vary. For example, some perks will increase the drop rate of a specific diamond or increase the rate at which you regain mana each second. The red diamonds are very important and in my opinion, their drop rate is the lowest. You use the red diamonds to unlock the tomb and crypt shops every few seconds. However, they are needed to summon also the final boss demon, which is at the top of the screen inside a mausoleum. The blue diamonds are used to are used as currency to purchase items and spells at the crypt shop. So make sure that you are saving lots of these and gain an advantage to fight the demon boss. There are many ways you can ready your necromancer for the final fight and it will be up to you. For example, I tried many different builds, but the one that worked the best was by obtaining summoning spells and totems to make my minions attack faster. You will also need a healing totem. And at the end, when fighting the demon, you will need to be able to summon cats. These cats can only attack the final boss demon and provide a devastating attacks to it. However, the cats do not harm other units. So be careful when upgrading. All right, this game is very fun and addictive. If you find it interesting, please head to the Steam shop and download the demo and add it to your wish list because it will be released or summoned very soon. See you, GG's.